welcome to the Go and Tell Gals podcast with Jess Connolly and Kanisha Bikes. Today, we're talking to one of our friends, a woman who runs on mission. We are praying this conversation leaves you fired up and ready to go right where you're at. We're super thankful for you. Let's go. Hey friends, we are here with an episode of Go and Tell Gals podcast, the Go and Tell Gals podcast. My friend Kanisha and I, our producer Brenna, and today feels a little bit different. And honestly, for us, it kind of feels like the mark of a new season, a new direction we're trying to turn into. And here, we'll just tell you from the from the start, what feels important to us is We're going to keep having interviews. We're going to keep having some amazing guests on, some women who are running on mission in different capacities, asking them honest questions about their calling and what it looks like for them to run in their calling. But on top of that, in addition to that, we want to start to have some conversations about some pain points that we're feeling, that we perceive a lot of you might be feeling, that feel really universal to us. We've brainstormed a long list of of those types of topics. We're going to be asking you guys what you want to hear about. But essentially, instead of just always talking about this broader idea of mission, we want to really get into the nitty gritty and say, hey, what's hard about this for us, for you? And how can we maybe not give you all the answers because we certainly don't have them, but how can we at least have a conversation that leads us to some more compassion, curiosity, hope in Jesus? Yes, Kanisha, what does that sound like I'm saying it right? Anything you want to add here? It does. I think you said that really well. I am so excited about kind of this, can we call it a shift? Yeah. A temporary shift? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's a shift. We don't know. We're just following the promptings, I guess. But yeah, yeah. I think that this is going to be really kind of fun to unpack some things maybe that we haven't talked about much and to kind of get to the heart of some things that maybe we've touched on before and we've been able to kind of like in a very superficial way, you know, um, discuss. But now we get to kind of get to the meat of some of those things. Yeah, absolutely. So that being said, we're going to jump right in. Today's episode, we want to talk a little bit about how do women of mission, how do you and I, how do we handle conflict and tension online? How do we do this thing? I mean, maybe you perceive there's a lot of tension online. Maybe you see conflict in the way other people are utilizing social media. Maybe you're in the thick of it. Maybe you're like, you know, just getting at it behind the keyboard, talking to people and sharing your causes and trying to move the ball forward. I don't know where you land on this, but I think we could all say like, number one, the world feels tense. And number two, the internet feels very indicative of the world sometimes. And so when we, when we open our phones, when we open our laptops, it's like, whew, this is a lot. And so I actually just wanted to start by sharing this. The other day was 9-11, so we're just filming this just a few days after the anniversary of 9-11. And for the first time ever, one of my kids was old enough to really start a conversation with me about 9-11. And I was driving him to work, and he said, hey, will you tell me about it? Will you tell me about what it was like that day? And he said, I've never really heard. He said, everybody says, like, I remember where I was. Where were you? I want to hear your story. And I was telling him, it was, of course, you know, heavy to relay, and it made me go back to that day and think about how that felt. And I was having this conversation with him about, wow, it's really crazy that I, in my teenage years, went through this really unprecedented season with our nation, you know, collectively, this this communal thing that we all experienced. And you're going through this really collective thing in light of the pandemic that is wildly unprecedented. I said, now there's some differences because mine felt shorter to some degree. And, you know, it wasn't this ongoing, intense tension for everyone for so long. And I said, but mine also felt different because everybody seemed a lot more united. And there was this heavy, intense, and beautiful sense of, we're going to get through this. And I think a lot of us might remember that at the beginning of the pandemic, and it has turned, (laughs) to say the least. And so I was just like kind of holding that with him. And he was like, yeah, wow, that's heavy. It just made me want to open this conversation, especially with women of mission to say like, number one, how you doing? How's everybody doing? And also, how can we do this better? What can we do? What What's our role here? So yeah, I'm eager to hear your thoughts too, Kanisha. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. Just the parallel that you're drawing between, I don't know if I've ever made that parallel between 9-11 
for and then also I'm I'm sitting here listening to you saying when you were a teenager and I forget that I'm a little bit older than you. <laughs> that was actually our when I think about 9-11, I know, of course, you know, again, we have the stories. I know I remember where I was. Larry and I actually were had only been married for a few months. We were military then. So we, we were in Texas at our first duty station on base. So um, I remember him standing at the ironing board, ironing his uniform and watching the news, watching CNN at that time. And we both were standing there thinking, is this a joke? How is this possible? And him getting calls from his superior saying, you're not coming. It was his first day. 9-11 was essentially his first duty day. Yeah. <laughs> so getting a call saying, you're not going anywhere and, and having the base locked down our first week wild. being on base. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. It was, we were babies, however. We were 21 and 22. So we weren't that far from our teenage years. But it was wild. So I think about that. I think about the parallels. I would definitely agree with you. It is different. When I think it's different, I also am prompted to, to find the spaces where it's the same and try to find some similarity between that so that there can be, I guess, what we would call a unity mm-hmm. somehow. Jesus, please bring Let unity. Let it be, God. <laughs> yeah. So here's my first question. And I told you, like, I have a few questions. I have no answers. <laughs> I mean, I have some yeah, thoughts. We're just talking about this stuff. We're just talking. And I pray if anything, this podcast feels like maybe when you might FaceTime a friend and say like, what are we doing? What's happening? You know, these are at least the kind of FaceTimes you and I have, Kanisha, where we're like, wait, what's happening? How Absolutely. can we do this? Yeah. So I think my first question and my thought to offer is this. The more I think on it, the more I pray on it, the more I like open my eyes and say, all right, this is what it is. I don't think the internet's the enemy. I think the enemy of our souls is the enemy. And I think the enemy's having an incredible heyday right now, just causing dissension and anger and frustration and bitterness. And really where there is potentially like massive issues or injustice or problems instead of there being solutions. There's just, there's just frustration and anger and pride. If I say that, my first question for women of mission is like, the enemy is the enemy. People are not the enemy, but like, how can we take care of our souls? How can we take care of our souls if this is what it is? Because opening our phones and our laptops and consuming and letting it wash over us or trying to pretend like it doesn't exist doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, I, yes, it's not working. I've been thinking a lot lately about just boundaries. And I think we've talked about those here on the podcast a few times. And I always say that you're, I think you're really good at creating boundaries. You're my boundary hero in some, some regard in some areas. But I think that for me, it looks like starting with, with creating boundaries. And so if I'm online, in the space that I have. And I think that this could apply to anyone, whether you have a quote unquote large platform or you have a smaller platform or it's a private account or whatever. Boundaries obviously apply, but creating a space that's safe for you and um, making it very clear as to what is acceptable and what's not acceptable and what you will allow and what you won't allow for your own mental, physical, spiritual health. That's been huge for me. I don't know if we're getting into practicals right now, but um, I would. That's uh, that's the immediate thing I want to hear. What what are your boundaries? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get real candid here. I think I've struggled for a long time because of the platform that I think people perceive that I have. I'll say it that way. That there's this responsibility that I have to hold a standard of some sort or to give space for conversations of certain kinds, right? But I think when I retreat away from that thought. And I think about my personal needs. I need health. I need to be well. And so in order for me to be well, sometimes I have to pull away. And that's what I've done here over the past, over a month now, I guess a month and a half, is I've pulled away. And so I think that we, and you can tell me how you feel about this, Jess, and Brenna, obviously, when I hear from you too, but there can be so much pressure, whether it's self-inflicted or from those around us to provide something sometimes that I think we were never meant to provide. And there's so many people vying for our ideas, thoughts, and opinions on things, right? And I don't think I would ever call myself a thought leader, ever. I don't want to, I don't ever want to be considered a thought leader. Probably, maybe that's my person. I was just like, I don't want the pressure of that. But I think that 
when we, as women on mission, as followers of Jesus Christ, that we have to be reminded that when it comes to thoughts, opinions, and ideas that ours don't matter. When I think about that, when I think about it from that angle, when I think, you know what, actually my thoughts, ideas, and opinions don't matter more than the word of Jesus Christ and what his words, thoughts, and or what his thoughts and opinions are, then it gives me the space and the freedom to actually pull back and give myself that boundary. And so I think sometimes maybe we need to shift that perspective of like, well, am I doing this? Am I in this space? Because I need my voice to be heard because I like my voice, because they like my voice, because they like my thoughts and opinions. Or am I in this space because I want at the end of the day, people to see him. And if I want people to see him, sometimes I'm getting in the way of that. So to be honest with you, I think, and this may not be true, I haven't processed it enough, but I think in some regard, I felt that way. Like, I think I'm getting in the way. I think I'm getting in the way of, not that I was like arguing with people on the internet or anything like that. I I do have some strong boundaries there, but it's really hard now, right? Like not to give a response. But yeah, I think sometimes that is kind of what we have to do is evaluate. I guess what I'm saying is evaluate the reason that we're there. Think about why we're there. If it's not him focused, purely him focused, right? I'll just give that superficial response and say, oh yeah, I'm here for him. Like my purpose has always been, my mission has always been that, that like I'm here for him, whether I'm, you know, I have a personal account or, or a public account or whatever, like my life is here for him. So yeah, I think that's kind of been my process and, and maybe a practical for me is just pulling away. I want to just say, even in you saying that, even in you saying like my thoughts, words, and opinions don't matter more than his word. When you just said that there have been multiple times in our friendship and in our relationship with talking about the internet, that there's something I think you're going to say, because so often there's something I think you're going to say, or that I expect you to say as a Christian woman or something that's like the, the line that like everybody's sharing. And instead you say the kingdom thing. Because you are so deeply loyal to the kingdom. So even when you just said that, like, it's his word for me. It's his word above me. I say cosign. I'm with you. And I'm so grateful that you lead in that way that says, like, it's it's the kingdom way for me. I am loyal and under the authority of him and of his word. And so I'm so grateful. And I feel that, too. And even just expounding on something you, like, you touched on. Maybe we can camp here for a second if we're going to talk about practicals and boundaries. There's like a a muscle in my chest that I'm rubbing right now because it it starts aching. It's, It's an anxiety response in my body when I start thinking about this. But I talked to you privately last week. We are actually talking with a bunch of friends about the way the kingdom is living itself out on the internet right now and what we think about it and how we feel about it. And I told you one thing that feels important for me is that I am having to go back to God and say, I need new rules. I cannot live under the consent. I cannot keep consenting to the rules of the culture, even Christian culture online that have these like standardized rules. So one of those for me is responding to everything and posting about everything. And there have been so many times in the last few years, so many times, hundreds of times, I know you feel this too. And so whether you have 10 followers on Instagram or 10 million, you know, this feeling of like, I have to say something. I have to say, somebody said, somebody said they're going to be disappointed in me if I don't say something. It's, it's 10 a.m. and everybody else has said something. And I want to say that my new rule is like that I am not a liar. <laughs> I won't lie. If I'm not thinking about it, if I'm not actually processing it and praying about it, I'm not going to lie anymore. <laughs> I'm not, and like, and if, if you post goodness. something that makes me think about it, I'm going to think about it. Nope. But I'm not going to co-opt what you said and what you thought and what someone else said and be like, me too, me too, me too. It's a lie. And we don't want people to lie. We don't want to purport this rule of the culture that says, if you don't say something, you're, you're negligent. Or if you don't say something, you don't care. Because what we actually want is genuine hearts that do respond to God and do respond to people. But we will not have the... We will not have the room in our souls to respond to anything if we don't do it genuinely. Yeah, I think something you said there at the very end, there were three words you said, respond to God, right? So it's like, who are you responding to when you are feeling this pressure to give a response? Are you responding to 
your followers? Are you responding to your own selfish desires? Are you responding to, I mean, the enemy and his voice? Or are you responding to your king, your Lord, your savior, Jesus Christ, (laughs) right? I hear the voice of my grandmother's um, nickname was Dink. God bless her soul. And she had so many wonderful isms. And this is not one of hers, but I I can hear her voice saying to me, even as I listen to you, don't you let those people get you in trouble. I mean, like, that's what she would say to me. She was a black Southern woman, you know, big in stature, six foot one, like just amazing woman, but I could just see her shaking her finger at me. And so can, can we just give the spirit of Dink, if you will, to, to some of our girls to say, like, if you need it, like, let that Holy Spirit voice, whoever that is to you, lead you in helping you question who you're responding to. I think we, I need that more. I need to, I need to have, you know, God uses my grandmother's voice a lot, I think, but just that you better let them be disappointed. I can hear her say it. You better let them be disappointed. Because my Ooh. answer that I give is not to the people. It's I, I mean, I'm literally getting chills. I feel convicted. I feel convicted even as I'm saying this. Like my responsibility, my loyalty does not belong. Our loyalty does not belong to the world because the world can give us nothing. It has given us nothing. We see what the world is giving us. It's giving us pain and heartache and stress and anxiety and depression and all these things. But that is not of the kingdom. That is not of God. That is not what he gives. He gives peace and freedom and liberty. And so I feel like I want to preach <laughs> right now. But, but the truth is, is that we do have to ask those questions. Who are you responding to before we pick up our phones and we begin to click and tap and all the things? Well, and maybe on the flip side of that, a really helpful thing we can say, just like, okay, for us in our house, for Go and Tell Gals, for for those under the sound of our voices, (laughs) we can say, hey, number one, you be free to to respond to God. You take whatever time you need to decide who you're loyal to and who you actually want to serve. And then also we can say, hey, for our house, for the rules of our house, let's also decide we're not going to be women who look at other women or other men or other organizations and say, like, what are you doing? What are you saying? Yeah. Ooh. Because it doesn't love people well. And I'll tell you this. I mean, I've told you this privately. I had an internet interaction a few weeks ago that really, like, almost did me in. I, I'm calling it, like, a low-grade internet bully situation who was really bullying me. <laughs> Genuinely. Like, I, I, mean, I think yes, it was, like, textbook was not low grade. bullying. not low-grade. It was not low grade. Thank you. Kanisha knows the whole situation. But I'll tell you what was interesting about it. And I'm telling you all this story because I believe it'll be edifying. I hope it'll be edifying. This person was not like attacking me or poking me about an issue. I wasn't saying something about an issue. They weren't attacking me or poking me because of an opinion I had shared. They were actually watching my personal life and the life of people I interact with And they were like poking at my relationships and saying like, why aren't you doing more for this person? Why aren't you doing this for this person? Why?" And it was like this person, the internet bully does not know me or this person in the flesh. They don't know either of us. And it was just like a pure voyeuristic. I think I know you. I think I know your soul. I think I get to speak into this. I gossip about it with my friends. It went as far to say that as like, I get together with my friends and we talk about it. But I'm telling you all this for a reason, because I believe in Jesus' name, it'll be edifying. And I'm not telling you so you'll feel bad for me. I'm telling you this, because I was so pissed at the enemy about it, and I had to deal with God about it, I had to process it, and I had to pray about it, and it it almost took me out. Because I was like, if somebody is watching my life this closely and is going to use their words, like another woman of God, a professing woman of God, is going to use her words to come at me in a way like this— Like, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. And y'all, the second I started talking to God about it, he was like, hey, you do that too. Wow. You you watch people's lives like that too. Wow. You don't DM them. You don't message them about it. But you judge them. And you pay attention to them. And it's not your business. And you need to repent. So that being said, I'll tell you this. How are we caring for our souls One big way I'm caring for my soul is I am reminding it often how other people work out their godliness is not my business. Not it's not my business. So I'll tell you if you want a practical, yeah, go ahead. 
<laughs> I'm clapping for my own repentance. <laughs> it's not my business. So wave the white hanky. <laughs> Here's a tip I literally just shared with a friend at church because because we were having the same conversation. This conversation I believe a lot of women are having right now. And she was like, how do you handle it leading a church? Because you're seeing how people live. You're seeing what people do with their time. You're seeing what people do with their money. You're seeing, you know, what people post about this and that and blah, blah, blah. She was like, how do you handle it? And I was like, here's the true story. This is my practical tip. Almost everyone for me on Instagram stories is muted. If you are not someone I like have shared a meal with or it's not massively life-giving content, it's kind of not my business. And so if I have time to look, I'm number one, really trying not to look. Number two, if it's going to make me stumble in any way, meaning it's going to make me prideful or it's going to make me sinful, I do not want to do that to you. And so I will take it out of my realm of consumption. I am here for that. I just recently, I have unfollowed since April. I have been slowly unfollowing people just because Mind you, this is not a, you know, cutting people off kind of thing. This is, I've had this account since 2012. Wait, no, before that, whenever Instagram started, I mean, you know, down to like ugly filters and all that, you know, when you posted pictures of your toes and like said, I got a pedicure like today. 2009, you know? 2010, something like that. Yeah. A hundred percent. So, so like I started do, taking care of all of that because I'm like, I don't even know who these people are anymore, but unfollowing and the muting of the stories. Not necessarily unfollowing people because maybe I actually, you know, have some type of relationship with them or care about them and don't want to necessarily unfollow them. But muting the stories, that has been massive for me and my soul. When we talk about when we talk about our souls, that has been so yeah, I'm I am high fiving you, amening, waving the flag, all the things. We could do three more episodes on how we take care of our soul on social media. I want to keep going in like, how do we handle the tension? And maybe we'll just keep coming back to it. Maybe we'll ask, maybe we'll ask every episode, like, how are you taking care of your soul? Here's my second big question. And this kind of leads more into, okay, who are we learning from? How can we use the internet in a helpful way? And here, so here it is. I'm thinking a lot about windows and doors and walls a lot lately. I told you this also privately while we were FaceTiming that I'm in a weird yep. prophetic place. Every time I see a window, door, yes. wall in scripture, I'm like, I want to know more. I want to understand more. I want to know more about windows and doors and walls. But so I'm thinking about that in light of the internet. How can we use the internet as a window to learn without crashing in the walls of our soul that do keep us safe. What are some ways that we can watch and see and learn well and truly like see different perspectives and and learn new things? Because that's the best of the internet, but also keep these boundaries close and, and protected, what needs to be protected. My first response to that, very honestly, is, is it possible? Like, is that possible? That's my honest, I'm with you, you know, how do we do it? But like, how do we do it? (laughs) Okay. I have some thoughts again. I don't think I have answers either, but I have thoughts and maybe they'll, they'll lead to discussion. So number one is this, is that I've been thinking a lot about, here's kind of where I landed. I think I can learn from anybody about anything. I think I can learn from someone who follows God. I think I can learn from someone who doesn't. I think I can learn from someone who's lived a life like mine. I definitely think I can learn from someone who hasn't lived a life like mine. I think what I'm pondering a lot lately is what areas of my life are open for learning and what areas of my life does maybe the window need to stay shut, but the light can shine in from the outside a little bit? Okay, let me give you an example that might make sense. So for me, body image is an example. I feel like I can learn from almost anyone about anything except for body image is an area where for me, like the window needs to stay shut because I have found so much healing and hope and health in having a kingdom-minded perspective about my body even if I'm like watching or learning from someone who has a body positive mindset, if they don't believe in the kingdom, some of what they're going to say is not going to land right for me. And it's actually not going to be good for my soul. So I want the light to shine in through the window, but maybe it's not all the way open. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it absolutely does. I think that's great. For me, the opposite question then becomes like, what areas do I really need to open the window on? 
You know, what are the areas that like I only have ever had my perspective and I really do need to hear different perspectives on this. For me, I think about politics. I think about money. I think even like even something is like seemingly like kind of safe as money in that like I only kind of know what I've seen about money. I haven't seen the other way people have handled money. I don't know. You know, I think about I think about church. Like I don't want to only see this one perspective on the way that I worship. I want to pay attention to how other people worship and what's life giving for them and what leaves them more in awe of God. Are there any non-negotiables for you, Kanisha, that you're like, I can't this has to stay safe. This has to stay like my perspective. I think when it comes to non-negotiables, I have to question, or I don't have to, but I choose to question why they are non-negotiables for me, if that makes sense. So I think I've been in this really interesting space recently, not where I'm questioning the truth or actual scripture or what I know to be, you know, like what the Holy Spirit has led me into over the years, uh, walking with him walking with Jesus, but more what we have been taught or what I've been taught is the truth. And so I think that that can get really sticky because especially right now, right? Because we've so overused the term de- deconstruction, right? I don't think I'm talking about deconstruction. I think what I'm talking about is actually walking life out with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and bringing things to him daily that feel sometimes perhaps a little more flesh-driven than spirit-driven. Am I making sense? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to non-negotiables, I think I, hopefully this is answering your question in some way, but I think I have to be really careful is what I'm trying to say. Lately, I feel very cautious about approaching some of those non-negotiables And just bringing them daily to the Holy Spirit to ask him, is this a non-negotiable for you? Or has this been a non-negotiable for me? Because my heart, my mind hasn't been open to it because maybe I've been misled in some of these areas, right? And I would say to our girls out there that we all have the Holy Spirit. I'm not asking you or I'm not challenging anyone to twist anything, right? Like we have the Holy Spirit. And at the end of the day, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. We have to make sure that things line up with scripture, right? If we're if we're kingdom girls, we have to be sure that they are. We have to, um, if we're feeling unsure about that, then you have us, right? We are a community of women who support each other in that way, I believe. And then obviously in your own personal lives, having some mentors and and trusted leaders who can also help guide if there is um, any confusion in any areas. But I think if I'm boiling down what I just said in all the words, what I really sense is that this comes down to checking pride and humility. Mm. And I think when we can approach these non-negotiables, these topics, these conversations with humility first, then that will guide us into a space that could possibly bring a little more unity than we are experiencing in our current time. Yeah, yeah. And maybe this will help. What I'm hearing you say is it's not necessarily important that we all have the same non-negotiables, that we all listen to God about what they are, and that we know how we find them. We know how we know which ones are ours. We know that we've gone to God. We know that we've gone to God's word and that we're approaching them with humility And I would say what I know you and I agree on, which we might maybe in the past have said, this goes without saying, but it doesn't go without saying anymore. (laughs) And so this can't go without saying. But that even for our non-negotiables, if someone doesn't agree with us or has a completely different perspective, that we still love and honor them and believe in the name of Jesus that they're made in the image of God. And they're still worth everything to Him. They're not worthless people. You know, like you can agree with something completely different from me on something to me that is a non-negotiable. And I can still look you in the face with a massive smile and say, God loves you. He loves you. He bought you with a price. He has placed value on your life and on your soul. You are not any farther 
from him. If by grace through faith, you walk with God, like even if you don't, like you are still so loved and cherished. Yeah. I feel like that helps me a lot to say, you know, at the end of the day, like that's, that's still true of my non-negotiables. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. I think that too often we have gotten into these tussles, if you will, these virtual tussles with people over the minutia of ideas, right? And we've forgotten, I think is what you're saying, we've forgotten the humanity of people. And that at the end of the day, they do carry a great story. I mean, isn't there a quote that's kind of been floating around for years? I don't know exactly how it goes. But it's like, you never know. Be kind to everyone. You never know what they're going through, essentially. What's the quote? <laughs> Brenda, do you know the quote? <laughs> yeah. So I think that we could obviously um, talk about this for a really long time. And there's so many different areas. And I think that we will continue, right? This conversation about how to care yeah, absolutely. for our souls well as we, I was going to say trample through, but that doesn't sound really good. <laughs> as we navigate social media and the digital world. <laughs> <laughs> But hopefully this conversation has yeah. has encouraged so many of you out there and has brought to light some things that maybe were hidden that you thought perhaps no one else experienced or felt. I think that's always what we're wanting to do here also is, is encourage and kind of bring everyone along for the journey as we also kind of navigate some hard things. I think in a lot of ways, this is new for all of us. This is not something that any of us have ever experienced. So we don't ever want to come as the experts, right? We are also on a journey of following the lead and the promptings of the Holy Spirit, but wanting to bring you all along. So we are thankful for all of you girls out there, thankful for your hearts, for your continued support and commitment to this space. And this has been a fun conversation I'm actually excited for the next one that we have. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do I end it? <laughs> like, I was like, there it is. <laughs> All right. We love you girls. We'll see you. We love you, ladies. Grace and peace. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are grateful that you were able to listen in. If you love this episode, would you do us a favor and leave a review so other friends can find this episode? We pray it encouraged you and left you feeling equipped to run on mission right where you're at. We're super grateful for you and we will see you next week.